Hello everyone, my name is Jan Koza and I would like to present you our paper called Combining Gaussian Processes with Neural Networks for Active Learning and Optimization. It was written by Jiří Ružička, myself, Jiří Tumpach, Zbigniew Pitra and Martin Holenia. First, I would like to overview this presentation. First, I will go through breakbooks optimization as it is, then through be benchmark functions we used, then I will talk about the CMA ES algorithm, then I will tell you something about surrogate modeling, uh, especially about Gaussian processes and Gaussian processes combined with neural networks. Then I will go through the results and ideas for future work. So what is a continuous black box optimization? It is uh, solving uh, optimization problems. So to locate a minimum of function and what makes it a black box uh, is that usually this function is a black box function, which means that we don't have any additional information about the function, only the value at specific point. Uh, in some cases, the evaluation of such function can be costly. Uh, typically, when uh, evolution goes through a long simulations or through experiments, it can be time demanding or cost a lot of money. So, uh, the goal is to limit the number of evaluation of such function. To evaluate our models, we used a widely used benchmark set of functions called Coco Bebop, specifically in its noiseless variant. This benchmark set consists of 24 benchmark functions divided to five groups of separable functions, functions with low or moderate conditioning, functions with high conditioning, uh, then multimodal functions with some global structure and multimodal functions with a weak global structure. We used it in five different di dimensions, dimension 2, 3, 5, 10 and 20. And for each function and dimension we used five different instances, uh, which consist in transformations such as translations or rotations in space. So here we are, we have some just visualizations to the examples of such functions. And now we would like to talk about covariance, matrix, adaptations, evolution strategy. It was uh, proposed by Nico Hansen. And it's uh, an algorithm suitable for optimization of nonlinear and non convex co continuous optimization problems. So it is an evolution strategy. So, uh, evolution strategy in general uh, works in following phases. In the first phase, it generates a new population of candidate solutions, then it evaluates each individual, then it selects parents, and the, because, uh, by the fitness functions, it selects the part, uh, usually the parents with the best fitness function, these parents will reproduce, and the cycle repeats, for CMAES, this means that we sample several points in the space, we evaluate the function in those points, and then we select some of the lowest function values, and we update the parameters M for the mean, C for the covariance matrix, and parameter sigma. And we up repeat until the optimum is reached. We can visualize this algorithm in two dimensions. So first, we see the distribution where we sample the points, then we sample the points and evaluate its function values, then we select some of the minimal values and uh, update the parameters accordingly. And again, we have different distributions, we sample the points, we select the lowest and repeat. So in this way, the algorithm goes towards the direction to the to the minimum of the function. So, uh, the surrogate modeling. Uh, as I said before, our goal is to limit the number of objective functions evaluations. And this is the reason why we use surrogate modeling. The surrogate model uh, creates an approximating regression model, uh, which can be uh, less accurate but it can be evaluated many times because it usually doesn't cost anything. It's 
maybe a little bit time demanding, but it's it's much better compared to the real objective function. To train the surrogate model, we use only the points evaluated by true objective function. Uh, the surrogate model can be, in fact, any regression model, uh, for example, Gaussian process, random forest, or neural network. The surrogate CMA ES variant uses the surrogate model on the whole generation, and then it evaluates only those points with minimal predictive value. In this research, we used a version of CMAS called DTS, Deblet Trained Surrogate, and it was proposed by Lukáš Bayer and Zbigniew Pitra. Well, what is a Gaussian process? Gaussian process is a stochastic process. It's a collection of random variables assigned to points from some domain in R to the, uh, to the D dimension. Uh, and it has to uh, fulfill the condition that every finite collection of those random variables has a joint Gaussian distribution. It is uh, uniquely defined by a mean function, which is usually con uh, assumed to be constant, and covariance function. Uh, the advantage of Gaussian process is that it also expresses the uncertainty of the prediction in, in specific point. Uh, here we have just a uh, simple 2D example of Gaussian process. So the crosses are sample points. The orange line is the is the mean value. It's what we predict in a specific point. And the blue area is the measure of our uncertainty. So here we can see where we have a lower number of points. The uncertainty is bigger. So we use the combination of Gaussian processes with neural networks. This is based on the paper called Deep Kernel Learning, proposed by Andrew Wilson. Here, the Gaussian process can be seen as an output layer of neural network. The neural network uh, computes a mapping from the input dimension to the subset of space of dimension D, and the Gaussian process then creates a mapping from this subset to real numbers. The training of this combined model is in fact a search of two sets of parameters. The first one is the set of parameters of Gaussian process and the second one is the set of parameters of the neural network. Here it works that the gradient is computed in respect to both together and optimized together. So we used the uh, following six covariance functions, a linear function, quadratic function, rational quadratic kernel, squared exponential, matern function, and a, a one composite kernel, which consists of square exponential and quadratic kernel. So the configuration of the neural network. Because we um, we had a restricted number of training samples, which was our goal to limit the number of samples, we decided to prevent the overfitting with used uh, only small multilayer perceptron. We used only a si single hidden layer, and the topology is shown below. experimental setup. <clears throat> the benchmark functions are optimized in the d-dimensional cube from minus 5 to 5 and the uh, initial population is sampled uniformly from a smaller cube from minus 4 to 4. At maximum uh, we can create 20, uh, 250 times d function evaluations. To measure the performance of the optimization we used the distance from the optimum. We used the logarithmic distance and we scaled it between 0 and 1. And we actually reversed the order so the 0 means the worst and 1 means that we reached the optimum. So the result, results of our algorithms. Uh, here uh, we have average score for different groups of functions from the benchmark set. 
and it's average over all instances and all dimensions and all functions of the group. As we can see, the first three groups are dominated by the rational quadratic kernel and the uh, four, four groups are, uh, the best one is the squared exponential and for the last last one, uh, the best one is linear kernel. So uh, we can see that on the easier problems, the best choice would be the rational quadratic kernel and those uh, hard, harder functions uh, may, might be uh, solved best by squared exponential or linear kernel. Uh, here I have a table for different dimensions of a function. So it's again average over all instances and functions. And again here we see that for lower dimensions the best kernel was the rational quadratic and for the higher dimension of 20, the best kernel was Matern kernel. So to summarize the results, the, the best ones seem to be rational quadratic followed by its square exponential and Matern. Unfortunately, so far, the combination of Gaussian processes and neural networks uh, didn't outperform the Gaussian processes alone. But uh, this is still a work in progress and we cannot conclude it objectively because uh, it differs a lot in implementations. When we tested the GP alone, uh, we used GPML toolbox in MATLAB. And uh, when we implemented the combination of Gaussian processes in our network, we do, do it in Python in GPyTorch framework. And when we try to implement only Gaussian processes there, then the results still were quite different than from the MATLAB GPNM toolbox. So it's still a work in progress. Now some ideas for future work. We'd like to try uh, alternative ways of training set selections because you simply don't use the all uh, points from the history of the, uh, of the optimization, we use only those that are near uh, the so far found minimum. Now you'd like to try the different strategies for that. Also, we'd like to try to use larger networks and uh, to use some kind of uh, heavy regularization to prevent overfitting. We'd like to also uh, look at the transfer learning and see if it could be applied to surrogate modeling of neural networks. And also we would like to try different um, types of training of this combined model. So we would separate the training of Gaussian process and neural network and also try to alternate between phases where we train the first the neural network, then the Gaussian process, and then both together and cycle again in these phases. So that was all for me, and thank you for your attention.